Well, welcome everybody to our first ever Mina studio. We're so happy to have all of you guys here. Um, just one little housekeeping thing before we begin. Down in the center, you'll see an icon that says Q&A. Any questions that you have throughout this 30 minute session, um, please list there. And then at the end of our session, uh, we will uh, answer those questions as well. Um, so first off, we'll have a POPs update. We have a couple exciting things that we wanna share with you. Um, we'll also learn about COVID-19 and the impacts that it's having on diabetes management. And then we'll also learn um, some nutrition tips and tricks on how to boost or maintain your immunity as well. Um, and at the end, we will have a drawing for two lucky winners. So please stick with us. Um, so first off, I wanna introduce uh, Chef Marshall O'Brien. Well, thank you, Stephanie. It's a real pleasure to be here, folks. Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of this pr program today. I'm a trained chef, published author of eight books, regular on Fox 9 television, and my whole focus is to help all of you watching today. And if you have kids, if you have grandkids, if you work with teams, you work solo, help you lead and those around you a happier, healthier, better quality life using smart nutrition. And when we focus on smart nutrition, we're talking four things, nutrition, sleep, hydration, physical activity. Something you might not know about me is that I have pet chickens, Meg Rose, Ginger Harriet. Lonnie always laughs when he hears that. And I love them dearly. They're a part of our family, but we haven't taken the step of having them in the house yet. So I'm not quite over the edge there, but I do love my chicken. So again, thank you so much for having me here today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We're excited. Um, and then next up, I want to introduce Lonnie Stormel, the CEO of Pops Diabetes Care. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, um, Lonnie Stormel, I'm excited to be here. Um, not only the CEO of Pops, but one of the founders of Pops. And uh, Love what I do uh, about diabetes and trying to impact lives with diabetes. And I don't have anything nearly as interesting about me as Chef Marshall does about a chef chickens, or I love the name Harriet and Rose. And actually, Marshall, I think those chickens might get a little nervous if you start bringing them into the house in terms of what's going on. So. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, fair, fair point. I want to also then introduce Stephanie to me to you all. Stephanie Toomey just recently joined Pops in the last week or so, and we threw her right into this, and uh, she is going to be our lovely host today. She is our Customer Success Director, and so Stephanie, please give us a little background on yourself. Yeah, I am excited to be here and join the team. Um, I Professionally, I have about 11 years coming from Shop HQ, which if you haven't heard of them locally, they're kind of like our, our Minnesota QVC or HSN, so I have a heavy retail marketing background. Um, but when I saw this job position come through, it definitely piqued my interest and kind of tugged at my heartstrings. Um, I have a couple family members that either have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, and I myself actually had gestational diabetes with one of my pregnancies. And fun fact, I also call my dad Pops, and so do my kids. So <laughs> it just seemed like a meant-to-be situation for sure. So uh, well, let's kick it off. First, um, we'd like to share a little Pops update. Um, we're going to share a video with you of one of our Pops champions, and her name is Mary. She actually recently joined our Pops support squad, taking care of our owners. But even more importantly, she's been using the Pops Rebel for about three years and has seen some really great results from it. And hi, <laughs> my name is Mary, and I've been a type 1 diabetic. For 19 years, I, I reached out to Lonnie based on a newspaper article I had read online. Um, I was just interested in the new technology. He got back to me and let me know. Um, and we've met several times over the past four years and I've been part of the testing. And my A1C has dropped about two points since I started using POPs. I also experienced less lap lows and less highs. So in my work activities, I am out and about a lot. Um, I'm very active, so it's nice to have the meter on me so I can tell if I'm going low, I can test right away and know the numbers and prevent anything more serious from happening. Um, oftentimes I'm out by myself too, so I know that. Um, I also like to hammock and scooter and I include those. Um, I'm able to keep my meter in my pocket um, so I can test while I'm doing those activities as well. Um, I'm excited to join the support squad because I'm a third generation diabetic. Um, both my father and grandfather were type 1 diabetics and had both had some severe complications related to diabetes. And I'm interested in just helping make a change in people's lives with diabetes and reaching out to people and seeing what I can do to help. Well, we are so excited for Mary to join our team. And we know all of the owners are in such great hands with her. And she's been such a great support just in my short week here as well. Um, and next up, we want to, we've also mentioned, we didn't introduce her, but here's Mina, our other panelist for the day. 
Um, and Mina is, in case you don't know, our AI virtual coach. She is another great resource for POPs. Um, she helps not only keep our owners keep track of their glucose and their health, but they she also keeps them engaged um, in tracking their goals. And one fun fact is last month, we actually celebrated her first birthday. So of course, in classic pandemic style, um, we had a Zoom birthday party for her. And so everybody at their house had a cupcake, as you can see, and we celebrated that first year, which was a big deal. But even more so, her second year is going to be even greater. We've got some really fun stuff in store, including games like Pops Bingo, which you'll hear more about, and also so much more. So we're really excited about that. So let's dig in. Um, first up, we have Lonnie. So not only does Lonnie have diabetes and understand the challenges that people face daily, but he also has a lot of connections in the diabetes industry. Yeah, that's right, Stephanie. So um, not only do I live with diabetes, I am, uh, you know, diabetes is my day every day as part of POPs, but I also volunteer to be part of the American Diabetes Association Community Leadership Board here in the Midwest. And um, actually on that board, I lead the advocacy team. And, you know, a big part of what the American Diabetes Association does is advocate for people with diabetes. That's a huge role for the ADA. And, uh, you know, during COVID-19, that's especially important to kind of think about how is COVID-19 affecting people with diabetes and how, what new things do we need to advocate and be aware of? And unfortunately, um, the data is not great in terms of what's going on. So I, I would guess that means things like glucose results, correct? Yeah, that's right. But, you know, more than that, let, let me back up a little bit. Um, in terms of how people are managing their diabetes, even before COVID-19 happened, um, there's plenty of data out there that say things like half of the people with diabetes are not controlling their glucose very well. 60% of people are not doing things like getting an annual eye exam, which is a recommendation for the American Diabetes Guidelines. And you know, 60 plus percent of people have high blood pressure. So it's these things that cause all the complications that are coming from diabetes because people aren't taking care of themselves and doing the things that are recommended from a diabetes perspective. Now enter a pandemic. So when you have that, unfortunately COVID-19 has been a terrible thing for everybody in the world. And especially obviously for all the lives that have lost that has been terrible. But when you look at 10% of the population has diabetes, but 30% of the people that have died from COVID-19 have diabetes. There's like an unfair proportion of people with diabetes that are dying from COVID-19. The good news is it isn't just because you have a diagnosis of diabetes that makes you more susceptible to COVID-19 complications. If you can control your blood glucose, that brings your immune system back up to strength and allows you to avoid the complications that come from COVID-19. Got it. So managing diabetes now is even more critical than ever. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, this is a critical time for people with diabetes to really take care of themselves to try to avoid some of the complications that come from potentially contracting uh, COVID-19. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, what we're seeing from a um, actual practices behavior is not good. It's actually going the wrong direction. So the American Diabetes Association did a survey recently in December of 2020, so just a month ago, and basically asking people with diabetes how they were taking care of themselves during the pandemic. And what we've seen is you know, things like 43% of people have delayed their routine care. So not going to their physician or not going and seeing their diabetes educator and so forth. These are the people that could be guiding the people with diabetes back into control and increasing their immune system to COVID-19. Or 20% delaying the use of new technology. So this might be as an example, starting insulin, if they should be starting insulin or going on a continuous glucose monitor or blood glucose monitor in general. Um, and so again, without that technology, they're probably not as well controlled and not as well protected from COVID-19. And while we all know that being physically active is a good thing for us, um, it's even more important, I think, for people with diabetes, both to control that glucose as well as just the mental health and everything that goes with it. And people are becoming more inactive, unfortunately. 
Um, and on top of that, we all know that there's uh, you know higher unemployment, people are losing their insurance, people have a tough time economically. And so because of that, people are saying they can't afford healthy foods. So all the things that we think are important right now during the pandemic are actually moving in a negative direction. Got it. And I would say even as people are quarantined still and everybody kind of has a different level of what they do, do televisits help with that type of thing? Absolutely. Telehealth is a great solution in terms of these people being scared to go to the clinic or they can't get out to you know, get their diabetes education because they're quarantining and so forth. So telehealth is a great solution, but it's not going to solve the problem by itself. Um, and that's why we think that solutions like POPs, of course, uh, but other solutions also where people can manage their glucose, manage their diabetes more in their own hands, they're going to be better at taking care of themselves. And so, you know, what I love, obviously, about the POP solution is that Mina, um, our host today, um, is really there to help you be more aware of the things that you should be doing to take care of yourself and, and staying active and, and having good mental regimes, et cetera. And also, the simpler way to check blood sugar with the Rebel Meter helps people keep that glucose more in control. So it's solutions like POPs that are more important now than ever during this pandemic for people with diabetes. Awesome. So thanks so much, Lonnie. That's obviously, it's very, very important, but it's also interesting to take away from that. Um, so next up, there's another way that we can also boost our immunity or at least maintain our immunity, and that is through nutrition. So we have Chef Marshall O'Brien joining us to share some tips and tricks, but also share a recipe with us as well. Well, yes, uh, we do. And, you know, just to, to go along with what Lonnie said, you know, at the end of the day, you know, how can we make life a little bit easier from a food standpoint? You, you have to eat. Everybody eats. You, you know, everyone in your life eats. Well, foods can work for you, like keeping your blood sugar stable. But from like a benefit standpoint, like they can help reduce stress. They can help boost your immune system. And that's some of the things I'm going to talk about here shortly. But they can also reduce inflammation, reduce headaches, improve digestion. Food can also work against you. There's foods that will increase stress on the body. There's foods that will suppress your immune system. There's foods that will increase inflammation. For, all, for those of you that are gardeners or runners or you're active or using a lot of brain power, you know when you eat the right foods, your day is just a little bit easier. And when you eat the wrong foods, how it makes things a little bit harder. You know, given today's, given today's world, you know, how can we have a little more control in our life and how can we empower ourselves? And that's where, where, where I come in and my team is we want to empower you in your kitchen and in your life so you can make the changes that you want in your kitchen and in your life. And a great way to do that is by using food. So I have a fantastic recipe for you today and you're gonna get it as a thank you for uh, being on this program. You're gonna get the recipe uh, later on. But I've got this awesome lentil soup, lentil stew recipe. And what the one thing that makes my organization really unique, and when we say, when I say we, uh, I have three chefs, three dietitians, two researchers, two writers, a videographer, publisher, editor, and we help people use food either from a safety advantage, like if you're a construction worker, factory worker, police, fire, uh, public works person, um, it can, you know, so it's performance, it's safety, it's also quality of life, less stress, you know, boosting your immune system, that sort of thing. But we give you recipes that help you go in a positive direction. I don't just give you a recipe because it tastes good. Now it has to taste good because if it doesn't, you're not going to eat it. You know, I'm a realist. At the same time, want it to be easy. And that's one thing that's so fantastic about the Mina app is it helps, it helps you go in a positive direction in your life in a sustainable fashion. And that's what we do with the strategies, the process, and the content that we provide organizations. So that's sustainable and it helps you go in that positive direction. So having said that, going in a positive direction, I have this awesome recipe and you can put it together in two different ways. Now the recipe that you will be receiving is an instant pot recipe. And we're basically, you know, for those of you, I'm curious, put it in the chat box. Anyone use an instant pot? I'm curious on that. I'm also wondering, put some courage in your fingertips and say on a scale of one to four, what are your knife skills? Four, you're an expert at knife skills, and a one, you're afraid to hold a knife, no problem. We're gonna get you caught up to speed in my uh, couple minutes that I have here with you. But I want you to make it easy. Gotta taste great, 
It's got to be easy, and it has to work for you. You know, I always say this, whether I'm doing my Fox segments or I'm on uh, programs like this or whatever the case may be. Nourishing is different than eating. You can eat to live or you can nourish to thrive. And when you nourish your body, you will perform, feel your best. So, you know, use food to thrive, not just to survive. And in today's world, eating the right foods, and you know, it'd be great. It would, and I'm gonna like try to walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm just so excited to be here. But, you know, it'd be really great if we could all grow our own food and, you know, all that kind of stuff and have the most, uh, you know, the most organic and, you know, natural foods possible. And that's not realistic for probably everybody or 95% of the population. But having said that, you can get great tasting and nourishing foods into your life at any grocery store, you can get these ingredients. And, and we always focus on that, making it practical, making it approachable and, and, and you know, don't be hard on yourself if you're thinking right now, well, I like this philosophy, I like what he's talking about, and you do not have to slice and dice without looking at it. I'm just trying to share some helpful information and also at the same time uh, put this together for you. But I want you to think about the baby step things that you can do to get more nourishing, great tasting foods into your life. You know, right now I've got this lentil stew recipe, okay? And what I love about it is it helps keep your blood sugar stable. It helps you feel fuller longer. And that whole blood sugar thing is obviously crucial for people who have diabetes. What I want you to be thinking about is how many of you can relate? Do you ever have blood swings throughout the day? You know, you feel good, then you crash. You feel good, then you crash. The problem with that, if it happens once in a while, no big deal. But if that's constantly happening to you, and I'm just waiting for my, uh, my pan to heat up here, and then I'm going to add a little bit of some olive oil. But if you want to use some ghee, you could, or some other, uh, if you want to use coconut oil, that would be really tasty too. But the, the problem with the blood sugar, if it's always going up and down, up and down, up and down all the time, that's going to spike your cortisol levels, which is, that, which is going to perpetuate inflammation in the body. And it's going to suppress your immune system. So we don't want that to happen. So let's fuse food to help us get us through the day with energy to spare. You know, you want to, I always say I want to give the best of me to my family, not what's left of me to my family. And food is a critical and delicious way to do that. Now let me just zoom back in here. You know, I do presentations, webinars all the time, uh, teaching people this in the various topics that I said. And so with this little amount of time, I'm trying to give you a little flavor of the, the why and the how and the what. So speaking of the, the how and the what, we're going to do some cooking with this recipe. You could use the Instant Pot as the recipe says, or if you wanted to use a soup pot, you could absolutely do it. Follow the directions, just, you're gonna, and I made a note on the, the recipe that you would cook it longer because you're not pressure cooking it, which is what an Instant Pot does. And I saw some people, I think, comment in the chat. That's awesome. All right, so we're just gonna keep, we're gonna keep moving forward. We wanna make sure that we've got a hot pan, soup pot, or Instant Pot. And then we're gonna add in our onions. Recipe says cook them till they're translucent, approximately eight, eight minutes. It might be five, it might be seven, around eight, just kind of depends. And we're gonna let that, we're gonna let that cook. You wanna make cooking easy, approachable. You want cooking to provide you nourishing, great tasting foods. So it's always good to have things prepped in advance. So, so be organized. It's really important. It's really important to be organized. You know, have your recipes, have your tools, again, Take it in baby steps. Now, another great uh, benefit of this stew from an immune system standpoint is we've got these fiber-dense foods from carrots, and we, have, and we have lentils. They're fiber-rich. That fiber will help slow the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream, thus keeping your blood sugar stable. Same thing for the lentils, high in fiber and also high in protein. You need good protein. You know, protein takes a long time to digest. It's going to help you feel fuller longer, keeping that blood sugar stable, help your mental clarity, help your energy, help your moods, and it's going to, again, help your immune system. Another thing that I love about this recipe is we have the emphasis on some orange-colored vegetables. Now, I have just some carrots here, right? However, if you think about more broadly orange colored vegetables, be it uh, yam, sweet potato, you know, the orange one I'm talking, there we go, we got some orange ones, some butternut squash, other winter squashes that are orange, orange bell peppers. What's significant about that, folks, is 
the orange color vegetables are rich in beta carotene and beta carotene will help it'll convert it'll convert into vitamin a and that vitamin a goes right to your lining of your digestive tract which is the first line of defense against bacterial and viral invaders now some of you might say wait what are you talking about chef a lot of people don't realize that over 70 percent of your immune system is in your digestive tract so what you eat dramatically affects how you feel and all that kind of stuff. So we've got to really put an emphasis into having the right kind of foods that are going to work for us and not against us. Now, I am into this so much talking and sharing all this stuff that I want to make sure I get my recipe done for you. So we're going to finish chopping up these vegetables. I, folks, I want you to walk away with three points today when it comes to foods to help improve your immune system. The first one are the fiber rich foods, as I said, and then the orange colored vegetables, as I said. And then the last point, and I'm actually, I'm gonna save that for one second here. I'm just gonna slice up some zucchini. I love to show the why, the how, or talk the why, show the how and the what. I want you, you know, I asked you how many of you are well versed with your knife skills, and I'm sure a bunch of people, looks like they commented, that's great. No matter where you are with your level of skill, in anything that you do, knife skill, saute skills, you want to read a book, run a marathon, no matter what, you've got to practice. So here's my homework for you folks. I want you to practice one minute a day, practicing what I just did, taking those knife skills, let the knife do the work one minute a day so that you can get your skills and confidence up. That's what I want you to do on that. All right, we got our veggies and we're gonna add spices and that's my third food takeaway to help improve your immune system. We've got some dried thyme and I have some cumin. The significance with thyme and cumin along with rosemary, oregano, basil, uh, chili powder, ginger, herbs and spices have anti-inflammatory properties so they can soothe your digestion which will help support your immune system. So do whatever you can to get good tasting herbs and spices into your, you know, into your life. And not only do spices make your food taste great, look great, and smell great, but they are going to help you with improving your immune system. The beautiful thing, folks, is you actually have so much control. You know, using Mina app, using various tools to support you on your, on your journey getting nourishing, great tasting foods into your life, you know, leaning on friends and family to, you know, to be there to help hold you accountable. There's so many things that you can do to support yourself in, your, you know, in the process to make, work, to make food work for you so you can minimize bacteri bacterial and viral invaders. Super, super important, like Lonnie was saying, especially in today's world. You know, just, just take an action. We get, whether we're doing something or not, we're, we're putting energy into it. So why not put energy into, and I'm adding some fire roasted tomatoes here, and I'm gonna add in my lentils. My point is, is we might as well put the energy into something that helps us go in a positive direction. I'm a big believer, I'm a big believer in baby steps. I'm out of time here. I'm a big believer in baby steps, and I always say that you know, anything that you can do today that's positive that you were not doing yesterday is progress. So keep it up. Now, a lot of people are at home. It's just the way, it's the way it is. I don't think it's going to be changing anytime soon. And if your cooking skills are great, well, now you can connect the role food plays in this example to help them support your immune system. You know, whether it's uh, for your, you and your family, if you're running teams, if you're, if you're running teams, managing teams, using food to help support in the workplace as well. I mean, food is powerful. It's not a, you know, nutritional wellness isn't a nice to have. It's a necessity. So, you know, support yourself, support those around you so you can do that. Speaking of doing it, this was so easy. I'm done. I literally did it in, in 10 minutes. And then all I do is I click it on pressure cook for 15 minutes and we're ready to go. If you want any help in, in the kitchen, if you want to help for yourself or for your business that you work at, we can help you with that nutritional wellness strategies process and content. Love to be a resource for you. Also got our interactive cooking show every Thursday night, live, real time, get uh, support with that. It's a family friendly event. Every Thursday, sign up for that, chefmarshallobrien.com. Let me know how we can help. A real honor and uh, privilege to be here. 
I'm uh, two and a half minutes. I'm probably going to over time. I'm going to get in trouble. But anyways, I think we're good. Thank you so much. I hope that was meaningful for everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to try that recipe. We haven't busted out the Instapot in a while, so <laughs> I'm ready for it. Um, so now we'd just kind of like to wrap up and by answering a couple questions. So if you haven't submitted anything on that Q&A button, please do. Um, but we do have a couple that came through. And guess what? The first one is for Chef Marshall. Um, yep. What is one food that you would recommend avoiding when trying to maintain or boost your immunity? Yeah, okay. This is, uh, this is simple, but yet it's a little complicated. Sugar, specifically added sugar. I'm not talking in an apple in a, or in a banana, but I'm talking in my decaf mocha that I used to drink every day when I had my old office, which was caribou coffee seven years ago. The problem with sugar, it's the number one inflammation causing food you can consume. So obviously, you know, for people that have diabetes, keeping your blood sugar stable and monitoring it is super critical. Well, sugar is pro-inflammatory, you know, you got to figure out how to manage it. So do everything you can to keep it, you know, you know, specifically World Health Organization says women, children, no more than 24 grams added sugar a day. And for men, no more than 36 grams added sugar a day. So read nutrition labels. It's an easy, free way to empower yourself to make helpful decisions. So get added sugar out of your life. And that's definitely going to make a huge positive difference for so many parts of your life from your mental well, your mental well-being, your uh, stiff and soreness to helping you sleep better. I can go on and on and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, awesome. I would say when I had gestational, I think learning the differences between the sugars made a huge difference and it got really easy after you figured that out, which is mm -hmm. fun. Um, the next one we've got for Lonnie, what are some habits that you have kept to stay healthy during the pandemic? Yeah, that's uh, easy. The number one thing that I've tried to do still every day during the pandemic is exercise. And so uh, for me, every morning when I get up, I exercise, I switch every other day. I, one day I do cardiovascular and the next day I do weights and so forth. And for me, what that absolutely does is help keep my glucose controlled throughout the day. Um, uh, getting that body moving creates a metabolism in your body and, and just keeps things moving uh, smoothly throughout the day. And I know during the pandemic, people say, I can't go to the gym or I can't do other things. I'm locked in my house. You can absolutely exercise in your house. And if you're not sure how, just go to Google and Google exercise in my house and you'll get all kinds of ideas. <laughs> awesome. Um, and looks like we've got one. Chef Marshall, what ingredient do you find the most fun to work with? What ingredients do I find the most fun to work with? Well, I, uh, I love using greens and so, that's a broad answer, but specifically whether it's spinach, romaine, kale, uh, various cooking greens, you know, collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, uh, arugula. I love cooking with greens because they're super versatile and they're really high in magnesium. And, and that is, uh, that's, a, that's a mineral nutrient that can help relax your nervous system, can help relax your muscles, it helps you sleep better. And the better sleep you get uh, helps your blood sugar. And so there's, they taste great, but they have a tons of uh, medicinal benefits and they're really easy to cook so i like using those that's probably one of my favorite ingredients and also spices you know i i could go on and on about how much spices are great and they have tons of benefits as i mentioned earlier so i say spices and greens and then having my grill available to cook up something awesome on there awesome yes grill is awesome i know getting creative in the winter time with that grill is something something that <laughs> kind of makes the the winter seem warmer too <laughs> Yeah, um, I agree. We've got one here. Lonnie, what do you benefit most from Mina and the Pops Rebel? I'm assuming it's safe to assume you use it. <laughs> <laughs> it is safe to assume I use it. And, uh, you know, uh, I have actually seen better A1C control. My A1C averaged about 6.9 before I started using Pops, just because of more of the inconvenient way that I was managing my blood sugar and so forth before. And now my A1C is about 6.1. And so absolutely you get a benefit from doing it. And, and I think the answer to your question is that ability to check my blood sugar throughout the day because I can do it so easily with the Rebel Meter, something I did not do before when I had a test kit um, is what made my A1C coming down. So that's probably the biggest thing. Awesome. And yeah, in our video for Mary, we saw too that her A1C in those three years went down from two points. So that's incredible as well. So that's just another case right there. Yeah, and, it, you know, uh, and then we started, like if I could, we started this company to impact lives and, you know, that's what we want to do, right? And, and so it's great hearing stories like Mary's. Absolutely. 
looks here, chef, how does eating fish for your meal fit into our diets and what types of fish are good for you and how to cook them? Okay, well, that's an excellent question that I'm not going to be able to answer the whole thing in one minute. I'll answer it in 30 seconds. Uh, focus, any kind of fish is better than no fish at all, and here's the reason why. Fish is rich in D vitamins, which you need from emotional health, well-being standpoint. Helps your, 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 your skin, nails, and your hair uh, not be so brittle during the winter, winter months. Uh, also, uh, B vitamin rich uh, fish is B vitamin rich. So cold water fatty fish. I mean, even just like, you know, the fish in Minnesota, you know, any kind of fish is better than nothing. But I try to focus on a combination of uh, salmon, sardines, uh, tuna, mackerel, trout is a great fish, uh, walleye is a great fish. And, and again, you know, something's better than nothing. So anything you can get into your life is going to be better. And if it's, you know, a couple servings, ideally, a week is great. If you can't do a, a, a you know an omega supplement because uh, omega threes that come from it really good for brain health and uh, also to anti-inflammatory properties and can support digestion, which supports your immune system. Awesome, that is super helpful. Yeah, fish is always a, a hot topic for sure, um, and a very important part of nutrition. And it looks like we've got, I believe, last year. Um, Chef Marshall, how have you seen food impact your mood? Or maybe if you've heard from other people how food has you know, impacted the yeah. food, impacted, whether positive or negative. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, I'm, I'm happy and willing to share that. So my, my side of the, fa my mom's side of the family, we have depression in there and I've made a huge concerted effort to focus on the right kinds of foods to support my mood and, and support emotional resilience. And so I practice what I preach and because of October through May, there's not a lot of sun in Minnesota you know, uh, it affects me tremendously and the right foods have helped me big time. And when I don't take care of myself and to Lonnie's point, that physical activity piece is huge too. I move my body a lot between that and eating the right kinds of moods, uh, foods to support my moods has made a positive difference. And I know people that have done, not done it and it's, they gone going a downward spiral. So definitely be aware, you know, awareness precedes choice, choice precedes change. So just, just pay attention and listen to your body. Absolutely. Well, it looks like that concludes our Q and A session of the event. So we're kind of wrap up here. So we have pulled two lucky winners um, from that. So we will be emailing those two uh, directly to kind of give their information on what prizes they have won. So congrats to them. Um, and then most importantly, as you leave the event, a quick survey, a very two, a short two question survey will pop up and we would love to hear from you. Um, we'll be doing these Mina Studios on a quarterly basis and to any feedback of what you liked, what you would like to see, you know, new special guests, anything like that, it would be super helpful to us. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. I know that I had fun and I learned quite a bit and I hope you guys did too. And we'll see you at the next Mina's event.